Yo, 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 yo. What up, everybody? Thank you all for joining. Welcome to the Early Morning Podcast. It is episode 62. Grab a J, grab a brew, grab whatever it is you do and try to kick back and uh, enjoy the episode, man. Um, we got a, a guest in this one, special guest all the way from Kosovo. If you're not familiar with that, check out the Balkan region or whatnot. Um, that's on a map if you're not familiar, but you could Google it as well. Uh, Google is probably your new version of maps and geography. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's Are You Happy? He runs Are You Happy account, a uh, um, nonprofit uh, organization. I mean, really interesting cat, to be honest. So, yeah, that'll, that's coming on later, but I figured I'll do a little, you know, 10 minutes or whatnot without, you know, before we bring in the somewhat serious shit, but. Yeah, man, I don't know if you can tell, but we're in the, in the, the backup studio or whatever I think I'm going to call it. Um, with the great art, fan art done by at VIK underscore EMP, which is also me, the host. Um, dude, we've got 100 subs now. We passed 100, man. I mean, that's that's awesome. I'm super, I'm super, super amped on it, honestly. just can't, I almost can't believe it as, it as the number was climbing. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what, what's going on? But um, I posted a TikTok. Uh, we'll probably put it here. I don't know. Just actually just go check out Early Morning Pod on TikTok. Uh, I posted a TikTok, man, a clip, and it got 3 million views, dude. It's at over 3 million views now and brought me like 20K or 20-something K new subs. I mean, new followers on TikTok, dude. Like... In three, four days, I don't know. Today's like the fifth day probably, I'm not sure. But, dude, it's crazy. Like, I mean, the, the, the shit is finally happening. Like, finally, not, not finally as if it's been a long time. But, I mean, you know, all right, this internet presence shit, it, it, it helps, man. It grows, dude. It helps. It's going to hopefully it'll help me get more shows, help me, help me get more confident when I'm on stage and all that. So, Dude, I mean, shout out to all you guys. Seriously, all the, all the new subs and all the followers on TikTok. I really appreciate it, man. I know it's just a number, but I don't just look at it like that. I look at it as a, you know, person that's actually giving me support in one way or another. You, I know you probably support Addison Ray or Summer Ray or Slim Shady Ray or whatever, dude, Sun Rays. But um, the fact that you, you know, I got that follow too is beast. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you for subscribing and you know, leaving a like, comment, or sharing it, sending it to a homie that might find the podcast funny is that helps the most, honestly. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, dude, we're just gonna be coming in with more heat, man. I mean, uh, I've another guest already lined up, dude. Maybe another two or three. You never know. But um, yeah, dude, I'm just trying to keep it fun, dude. Keeping keep this summer, you know, en- light, energetic, and like, I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. I mean. It's, yeah, we'll see what we can do, man. We'll see. I mean, today it's uh today is uh June 27th. It's a um for me, you know, it's Sunday. Sunday is always like family day and today I got a cousin that's uh she's moving away actually. She's going to college, dude. Young OG, bro. Big salute to this girl, dude. Um but she's going she's moving uh to another state for for school and she's an athlete, D1 athlete, so she's a beast, straight up legend. I mean, so yeah, we're going to go celebrate her and, you know, wish her a happy birthday and stuff. So I'm amped for that, dude. I'm just happy it's summer, man. And it's like, I mean, obviously I, I'm a hot boy and I, I'm wearing a polo, so I'll be hot in like 30 minutes or sweating and freezing a towel and then complaining about why the air conditioner is not on and it's 11 o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you get when you're, when you know, you live in SoCal, but hey, dude, Austin, Texas is a lot better, dude, you know what I'm saying, or Florida, go to Clearwater, Florida, man, and just, dude, Mike, I had another family member over last night, and he said, dude, he's from New York, he said that his basement, um, the base, dude, it's disgusting, the basement of his house gained so much, it just collected moisture, and there was like basically a pile or a pile, a layer of of water and sweat on the bottom of their basement. So just be thankful if you don't have that, 
if you do, I'm sorry, man, get a carpet or get, you know, those like things that absorb piss, like a piss pad for your dog or something. I would get that and put it in my house. But I mean, I don't know. I, luckily, I don't live in a region or state where that happens. I'm very, very blessed, dude. Um, I'm able to do this pod from wherever, dude. Got the fucking mic, got the cam, dude. Got the lappy, dude. So we can do this literally in the hills of Montana. So I'm fine with that, too. Well, maybe we will do it one day there. I don't know. I don't know, dude. Maybe maybe we'll we'll go to New York and do it in this basement, dude. Who knows? Just for fun, have the camera fog up a bit, you know. Um, who knows, dude? Who knows, man? But yeah, I hope everybody's you know enjoying themselves and getting ready to have like a good summer. And I mean, j- j- got a holiday right around the corner, dude. I don't know. Maybe I'm just feeling extra gay or what? It, I don't know, dude. I don't. I really, I don't know. I'm not sure, man. But anyway, we should probably just get into the episode and. Um, yeah, man, Atle is American named Theo. He just he gives a really good, really good background about like what his goals are and how he reached that point of you know wanting to, wanting to do what he does and, and his future goals. So it's it's really really cool. I mean, he was a cool cat, and once he realized I was Albanian, he he was a lot cooler, if you if I'll say, dude. Anyway, thank you guys. Um, I really hope you enjoy the rest of the EP. I will catch you guys in a couple days. Peace. What's up, bro? How's it going? Good, man. Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Oh, hell yeah, of course, man. Um, so yeah, you got 15 minutes, right? Um, you know, you're my last call of the day, so. I'm okay, gonna I'm not gonna take too much of your time, man. I just wanna just. Cause I really respect what you're doing, dude. That's really it. Like I, I just came across you randomly on TikTok, and I was like, dude, what the hell? This guy's put in a lot of effort into making the world a better place. Not many people do that. So I was real. And then when I found out you're Albanian, I was like, holy shit! Another Albo's out there trying to do something. Like that's so cool. So oh, okay, so you're Albanian too. I'm Albanian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Albanian. Oh, full. Yeah, yeah. You get all the time you need. You get all the time you need. All right. <laughs> Thank you, dude. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no, I, 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 sorry. I thought I told you that before, but yeah, dude, I'm Albanian. So, but I'm, I'm, not, I wasn't born in Albania or anything, or Kosovo or Montenegro or anything. But my, my father was, and both my parent, my mom's parents were. So, I, we go all the time. But yeah, dude, what I saw you're from like a small village out there. What, what's it? What is it? Diber. Diber. Okay. And where you, are you? From? So I'm from out, out west, uh, Cali, on the west coast, uh, Orange but like, uh, Oh, I mean, like, are you roots. Alba- okay, so Albanian from Montenegro. So Trish, I don't know if you if you're familiar with that area. It's like a mountain, a mountain. Vi- huh? How do you spell it? T R Y Trishi. T R Y or T R J S H I, I believe, or maybe an E is in there. Both my parents have, they're from like mountain villages, man. Yeah, same. <laughs> but sick, dude. Yeah, um, yeah. So I noticed your, your, okay, so you had your name as Theo and then it just changed to Athle, right? Is that how you say it or am I butchering Yeah, it? yeah. Yep. Okay. So do you do you normally introduce yourself as Theo or what? Well, Theo is what my clients called me, gotcha. uh, and then Adve is obviously my real name. And for all are you happy stuff, I keep Adve. Oh, you but, do. Okay. Uh, so if somebody's paying me, I let them call me Theo. <laughs> I feel that. So you said client. So this would be would this be like would I be normally one of your clients or what would this be like? What? No, so this is, well, are you happy? I don't really do for the money. Mm-hmm. Um, this, uh, my, I, I have other work where I kind of do like social media consulting. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so. Are you, so the, you said, are you happy? So like, I noticed that there were, I heard, I hear your voice sometimes in the videos and then I hear like other people and I noticed you even put, um, are they Albanian? Most of the people that work with you? Uh, not really. My brother does it. Your brother does. Uh, okay. My brother does a lot of the interviews. 
And then I just I just open it up to whoever wants to be a part of it. Because I, I I heard one with a female voice the other day too, so I noticed like there. So how do you how did you do that? Do people hit you up and are like, yo, dude, I really want to do this? Like these street interviews or just interviews with random people, or like do you reach out to somebody that you think can do it or something? A lot of people were hitting me up organically, and I just made it a thing. Like some people were hitting me up. I was just like, all right, let me. I actually put a system in place where people could join mm -hmm. if they wanted to. So I, I put it at the end of a couple of videos and mad people just signed up. That's cool. Through that system. And did, so now it's kind of like an automated process. Did, were you surprised by that or did you expect like a lot of people to kind of want to be a part of it? I expected it. You did? I expected it. That's cool, man. Uh, it kind of broke my Gmail. So like I've literally been spending <laughs> the past 48 hours figuring out like figuring out my gmail because gotcha. it i i got so many emails i like i don't know what gmail thought i don't, I don't know if they thought i was like spamming or something but <laughs> they shut me down. Yeah. all right so yeah i'm gonna be so that, to anybody don't don't be emailing out the right now because uh he, he he's <laughs> got to figure out his situation with gmail google's on his ass so <laughs> um how did you okay so I'll, tell, I'll be honest, with the first video I saw was, I think maybe your biggest one was the one where you kind of described the are you happy, you like break it down kind of. And I don't know if you know, I don't know if you've done a lot of these videos. To be honest, I kind of wanted to hear this from your own mouth and kind of do, kind of hear you talk about it rather than me do my investigating because anybody could do that. But um, the one that I did see and I, I came across you was like, you were like, yeah, I'm from this village. I moved to the States when I, was it six or seven or later on? So I was actually born in the U.S., but I lived in Dibur, um, and then I moved back to the U.S. when I was six. Six, okay. Yeah. Why did do you know why were you were you supposed to live here or something, or did was the plan to always go back or what? Yeah, the plan was always to go back, at least for my parents. My, Got you. My parents, the point for my parents was like, let's you know, let's um, give our children a good life in America. Let's see how far we could get, and then eventually one day we'll come back. But you know, life gets in the way sometimes. Oh yeah, dude. No, life almost always gets in the way, dude. The, the, the plans never usually stay how we want them to. At least I've learned that. But um, I was gonna say, so you you come here, was it hard, man, having that na like a name like Atle and like <laughs> like was that? Did, I always wonder that for like the, for the guys that are not born here, or you were born here, but like you know what I mean, like raised like were you raised speaking English those first six years? Well, it's kind of, it's funny because, so I was, I was raised speaking Albanian. There's still some more over here. I was raised speaking Albanian. Um, and we had, we went to Albania every summer, but it was just that one year where I stayed. We, we had actually left America. We sold the house. We got all our things. Dang. We went to Albania to live there. And within a year we, we changed, they changed their mind and they were like, no, we're going back. Um, and then, yeah, you know, of course, when the teachers call in attendance, it's like John, Mary, <laughs> Tyler, Luke, as Adhi, as the. You, you probably know. heard it all, man. Like I, they probably put oh. any anything, man. Because even I even asked my parents, dude. I was like, okay, I, I've I've seen a lot of Albanian names, and I usually am pretty good with like spelling them and stuff. I was like, this one is really like pops. You gotta help me with this one. And he even was like. Wow, I haven't met a guy with that name, but I've heard people, you know, with that name. So he was like, that's a really, like, Albanian, Albanian name. I was like, damn. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, so how did you – I'm sure – I don't want to be one of those annoying kids, bro, but I'm sure you've answered this a thousand times. But how, what, how did you really get into this, like, kind of – because I don't even know what to, how to describe it, honestly. It's, like, just, like, just being a per normal person, trying to talk to normal people. Like, how did you get into that idea? And it's funny because I also struggle struggle to describe it. Yeah, okay. I'm like, people are like, why did you do it? I'm like, why do we do anything? Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't... Look, I always believed in myself. I always put my... I always invested in myself. Like any job I had, I always... It was like rent, food, bills, and then myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I had an idea for a project, if I wanted to do something... I would just 
I would I would pay for it. I never was the type of person to be like, oh, fund me, fund me. Oh yeah. Uh, and the whole time I was thinking in my head like, oh, let me just build a portfolio, and somebody will hire me. Um, but I just kept building that portfolio to the point where it was like it became this, you know, because I, I have a bunch of other shit that didn't pop off like this. Um, what was that? Like, what, do you mind me asking? Like, what kind of stuff were you working on before or whatever? Like everything. I was doing like short films, long films, uh, documentaries, commercials. Um, like I did a commercial for Tide without Tide ever hiring me. I was like, I, if Tide were to hire me, what would the commercial look like? And I just So you never got out. paid or anything? No, I never got paid. Wow, that's not chill. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> no, wait, hold on, hold on, because they never got the commercial. I was just like, I, for example, all right, so I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> I was going to say, so yeah, you started with film then. Okay, you started in kind of film and like documentaries and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So like if I, if I was a successful fi- I wanted to be a successful filmmaker. Yeah, don't say successful. if you you're still on the way, bro. You're still. Oh my bad. Sorry, I was be- sorry if I was being loud. Um, uh, what's no, it called? No. Yeah, you're still on the way there, bro. What do you mean if you're still doing it? Well, before are you happy? I was like, okay, I want to be a successful filmmaker. What do successful filmmakers do? They get paid to make movies. Yeah. Okay, so who's getting paid to make movies? Commercial directors movie directors so i'm like okay if tide is paying commercial directors to make a commercial let me just reverse engineer it let me make the commercial and send it to tide and i just kept doing that and doing that to the point that it became you know are you happy popped off wow that's crazy to think that it started with like you trying to make a commercial for fabric softener and like clothes cleaner and now you're like running this freaking what's the word the i like humanitarian, like I feel like that's kind of like it's like humanitarian social work that you just, but it's not work. You do it for like, you do it. I don't know why you do it. I'll be honest, but you just you do it, and it people really seem to either get like entertainment value from it. I just like I said, I I was just struck by like the 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 kindness. I was like, what people are always like you said, okay, you help people with social media work. People on social media tend to just want to get famous or get right. get to a point where people recognize them for one reason or another. With your thing, it was like the whole idea was like you're, you don't see the, the creator, so to speak, you know? It's all just about this person off the street. This I, I like the, this one a lot. This lady was like, I don't know if it was like Zion, like some, some, some crazy trail in Utah, something. And she was like, yeah, I'm 71. I just got like a, a hip replacement or something. And she looked like 45 or something like that like she was crazy and then she was just, i don't know if she was telling you like yeah i'm celebrating my life something like that and yep. i was like wow like the, you make that person the star basically you know what i mean exactly and like it. yeah and it's like they, they don't even know they're not trying i, I don't know have you come across yeah. like do they see the camera or the or the, the phone ever like do they try have you noticed they like amplify it for for like for the camera or anything we typically, it typically goes like this. I will see Victor where, I, <clears throat> wherever you are, I'll see you on the street. I'm like, all right, that dude's got a cool shirt. Let me, you know, I, th- I think you'd just be a cool, he has got a cool vibe. Let me just interview him. So as soon as I decide that, I'll hit record on my phone. And then I'll, I'll like, I'll kind of walk like this. Okay. I'm not really worried about what I'm recording until they actually say yes. This I'm just doing for, just for record, like it's because I asked them, like, hey, could I interview you for a documentary? Mm-hmm. And if they say yes, boom, I got that on camera. If they say no, I cut it and it's like, all right, have a good day. Got you. Uh, <clears throat> so then I'd be like, you know, can I interview you for a documentary? They'll say yes. I'll be like, all right, one second. And I'll just kind of frame it up real quick and I'll just kind of, I won't look at it anymore. I'll just hold it like this mm-hmm. and I'll look at it in the eye. And that eye contact makes this disappear. Oh yeah, dude. And I think if you do it quick like that, where you're like, all right, one sec, and you don't really give them a second to process and think about it, that's perfect. And the shot really isn't as important for what you do, honestly. It really, it's, you do see the person, you have an idea of who they are, and that's really it, honestly. Like, it doesn't need to be perfectly aligned and stuff, but that's really- Yeah, a lot of videos you'll see, it's like- Yeah, it's moving and stuff, yeah. And so, wait, did you go to film school or did you kind of just do all this on your own? Um, I did go to film school and then I did do it on my own. 
Wow. That's so like a lot of self motivating and self teaching. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I I self taught myself all the editing programs. From, you know, by the time I was like fourteen, I I knew them just from YouTube. Oh, so you knew by uh, by a young age? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Very young. That's awesome, dude. What 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 do you what what was the hardest one that you've like you were able to teach yourself, but took the most time? And Probably I might. After- What's it called? After Effects. Okay. Like animation and uh, moving graphics and stuff. I'm not a pro at it, but like I know how to use the program. Got you. And I'm assuming now you have like a like a team that kind of does that stuff for you, or do you still? Oh, you do. Okay, work. I'll, I'll go. I'll go in there sometimes. You know. I saw um, and this maybe was the first video. I don't know. That was like. I know what happens all the time on TikTok is people will just like catch something on on a person's page and just go through all their stuff, which is what yeah. I did probably twenty times with your thing. And um, one of the videos I so that's why it's hard for me to break up what happened in each TikTok or video. And uh, one of the ones I noticed was, uh, and I think I was that first one where you went back to Dibur and you and you built that or not. I don't really know exactly. You donated like a bus or made it like uh, accessible for like kids with handicap and stuff. Was it yep. a, yeah. Could you just explain that a little bit more if you don't mind? Cause dude, I was just like super taken back by that, man. No problem. I'm eating cookie. Oh, you're good, dude. Um, so yeah, I obviously from Debo. And when I hit a million followers, I was like, how can I, how can I celebrate? And I was like, I don't know, what should I do? Like, should I throw a party? Should I buy a cake? (laughs) And then the idea of like starting a nonprofit came to me. I was like, oh, we are, you know, a lot of people say the videos make them happier. What if we create a nonprofit to actually like use this audience to help people in a real tangible way? And so I, I looked at like, I was doing some research on nonprofits and such bullshit, dude, like nonprofits are so fucking fake. Uh, like, uh, for example, um, the pink ribbon, uh, Susie, what's it called? No, it's Chromin or something that breast cancer organization. I mean, you've seen it ever. Yeah, I'm wearing a bre- I'm wearing this. Uh, uh, should I take this off? Or is this like what, what is this not? Uh, well, all right. So like 80% of donations that go to that organization, go to things like marketing, salary, rent, merchandise, mm-hmm. very, very little, very small percentage of it actually goes to cancer. And then an even smaller percentage goes to a cure. So like the part that does go to cancer goes into like, uh, research, um, studies, well, you know, it's all important, but yeah. actual fighting for a cure is, and then, uh, so many other scams in nonprofit, like obviously nothing against breast cancer, nothing against. Yeah, life. dude, I'm playing or I'm, I'm joking around, bro. Yeah, I know. But, but there like the black lives matter, um, uh, Kickstarter raised like over, I mean, several million dollars and they're still going through issues now. Like, where did that money go? Really? Wow. So like with you, so yours, you're kind of like, I don't want to say. The point of that, after I saw that research, I was like, let me create an organization where it's like the opposite of what these people do. It's like, we're not trying to solve world hunger. We're not trying to cure cancer. We're trying to do really small, but effective um, initiatives that like are very tangible. Like, there's a school that has no means of transportation. We could go to this school. We could, I've met the students. I've met the teachers. I've seen the problem. It's a small group of people. Big problem, simple issue. A handicapped accessible bus. Uh, and we're going to keep doing stuff like that. And so we're, we're like $5,000 away from this bus. You said, oh, so that you're still working on that bus. Okay, awesome. So yeah, this for the people listening now, I mean, please. We're, I'm going to have all that information in the description and stuff. So if you wanted to like any bit help any little bit i'm sure would help so so you first what it was the first big goal then with that was it just getting making the school nicer or what what, did, what was the first thing you did because if you're still the bus is still like the next goal basically 
So the first thing we set out to do is the bus, sixty thousand okay. dollars, and we're like fifty-five thousand dollars in. Wow, that's crazy, man. I mean, I was gonna say, how does that feel? But you're still, you haven't technically got it yet. But that's awesome. I mean, does how do you you sleep good at night? I hope knowing that you know, yeah. like you can help, you're gonna help some kids get to school, man. I mean, I'm sure you heard the stories from your mom and dad. Like, yeah, we had to walk seventy-five miles right. in the rain, and there were dogs chasing us, and like. You know, once we got there, we had to get past like drywall and like there's like every kind of story. <laughs> there, you, so, it was uphill both ways. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, snowing in the summer, dude, in June too. So it's like, yeah, of course. So I'm I'm sure you've heard all that stuff and like you're like, dude, okay, let me let me actually like you said, let me actually go there. Let me see let me see how the conditions are, or whatever, and then make it so that I can get these kids to school. That's that's really cool, man. Do do Albanians? Do you ever get recognized by like Albanians? Um, yeah, their, oh, are you the are you happy guy? Do there is you, just because you're like at a like, wedding? Oh, at a wedding? Like, okay. Yeah, a lot of children that are like, oh, like one of my uh, little cousins. Yeah, I saw her at a wedding and she was like, "Can you follow me? Can you follow me?" That's hilarious. So I followed her and she was like screaming, "A famous person follows me!" <laughs> but she's your cousin. She's your little cousin. Yeah, that's cool, dude. And do like what do what do what do they think? Cause you know I, I know I'll be, I, it was hard for me to even start any kind of internet presence. I'll be honest, man. I don't want to make this about me at all. I'm just saying cause like having all Alba like Albanian family and like they're all in your business, man, all the time. So like even anything that you say in real life, I watch it. So even to put it on the internet now and have it like solidified in one place, I'm even like and I do comedy. So like I, I push the limits and stuff all the time. And like that's basically the goal. So, have you were you ever like, man, what are they gonna think? Did you ever have that kind of sense where it was just about like your family or like culture, not like what is the internet gonna think? Because that's whatever. But what is my family gonna think? Hundred percent. Yeah. And the way I solved that issue is I didn't tell them. You don't tell I, them, really? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, my parents knew, you know, because when Are You Happy was blowing up, it was right right around the beginning of COVID, and I was home. So they saw it happen, but I told them, I was like, don't tell anybody, let's keep it low. And hmm. if they find out, then they find out naturally. And now all my family knows, Matt Albanians know, and they probably don't even know it's me. They just know it's some guy from d -Bird Dude, you, I, it's crazy because I didn't know what you look like. And to, only that those like two, three pictures you ever put of yourself, I think in your videos, like... I barely, I was like, I wonder what, now you, I, you look like, like two of my cousins, man. Like I know four, <laughs> I know guys that look exactly like, you know, but yeah, he looks like Otle, dude. Um, <laughs> instead of, they're not going to know Marian Zuljurai, dude. That's just some kid from, you know, he's just lives in a pasture basically. But um, yeah, dude, yeah, that's really cool to be like, yeah, don't just keep it low key for now. And then like, we'll, we'll see what we can and do. Then they'll find it. They'll find it on their own. Like me, literally just like me, bro. Like I just came across your stuff and I didn't blow you up. I didn't like tell like my Albanian cousins, yo, check out. I did get excited when I got this locked in where I was like, yo, I'm actually going to be able to talk to that guy that like does. I was like, just like that, that guy. That's how I worded. I was like, I'm going to talk to that. Are you happy guy? And they're like, oh, no way. I'm like, yeah, like actually. So now to put a face to that, that are you happy handle and that the logo, it's like, oh, okay. Now like. Do you, think, do you think it should be more of like just keeping it what it is or do you think I should put myself in it? I'll, I'll be a thousand percent honest with you, man. I think the, the, the allure, there's like a romantic kind of thing. Maybe romantic's not the, but there's like an allure to not knowing who's there. That really is like a big draw in, man. Cause you, like I said, it really, cause you almost forget, you don't, you forget about you. You really do dog. Like when you watch, when I, at least for me, and like I, I, I've seen, I've seen people like my homies watch your video, and they never. It's never like, what is he saying? That what is that one guy say? Or what is? It's never that. It's all about what that person that you have. Like I remember this one, this construction, these two construction dudes. You were maybe yep. they were in like a garage, and this guy was like, yeah, man, I'm just happy to be, you know, working. I have a good, I have a good like coworker. I was like, I only thought of all the asshole coworkers I've had, you know, in the past and how happy this guy is to be in a hard hat in a garage in New York City. Like that, I was just like, dang, I never once thought like, how did you get there? You know, who are, it's, it's never, it's never really like that. I just assume that you're doing your thing in public 
that's really what it is. Like, oh, he's on a hike in Zion, and this, like, like you said, you basically describe you just you see their vibe, kind of just like how they are, and then you approach them. So yeah. I, I would say I don't, I don't know anything, bro. But I would say like I, I think the draw in is definitely that's a big draw rather that like not knowing or seeing you, and then it makes people want to go reach out to you like this, dude. It made me want to do more like research and investigating on who you are, basically. So I, I think that's I think how you're doing it is cool, but like I said, I don't, what do I know, man? As, as, yeah, I'm gonna keep it up. I like it because then it's like I could I could go outside. Nobody bothers me. It's all dude. good. Because you know you know how it gets. Once you get to a point, it's like you gotta start locking your door. You know. You I mean, hey man, we I don't I'm nobody and I lock forty doors, dude. I'll keep them all locked, dude. I mean, yeah. I I don't know. Of course, dude, you, people are gonna definitely start recognizing. I mean, yeah. if your cousin is freaking out, you see what it does to like the youth and to people. You know that. She, I don't know yeah, how, I, go ahead. You know, people, people will be thinking like, people are thinking that God knows how much this guy is making. God oh, knows yeah. how much this guy is making. Let's run up on him. You know, let's find him. Let's, you know, so I got to start like, you know, so I'd much rather just, it ain't me, it's them, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And they, they, know what they think. He's, this guy's got millions of views. He must be making millions of dollars. Who, know, who knows what these, you know, Albanians, you know where I am around? Like, what's up, bro? I mean, you can't even see it. I had a feeling you were somewhere over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, it's, like- it's unfortunate that it is like that. But yeah, it is, I know what you mean, for sure. But I get, uh, to be honest, I didn't even, again, I didn't think that, man. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm like a normal guy, like normal view yeah, or whatever. Normal yeah, I'm yeah, just a normal no. guy. I never was like, dude, I wonder how much this kid makes. I really <laughs> never, I never really thought that. I never did. I was just like more interested in like what, what you do and why you do it, honestly. But you, yeah, you, the typical Albanian brain would be like, is he connecting this to like what kind of money and like, yeah, exactly. What kind of bands does he have? Is it S class? Is it AMG? You know that it, I know it now. It's unfortunate. You know, that's, you know, I might be, I might be stretching, but I think of, I think of a small percentage of people that can ruin my life. You know, oh, a small really? So think about it. We get, you know, we get uh, 10 million views a month. Even if 0.5 percent of of those people are, are messed up, that's Greedy. five thousand. Yeah. That, are, that got I don't know. Five thousand is not a small amount either. That's like no, no, it's not. that's a, so, ten million like, a month. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, you're you're reaching so many people. So like, and this is another thing I was gonna say about that, like how you like you you being seen and whatnot. I noticed that like you do it all over the world. So that's a, like kind of an advantage pretty much is like people don't really know where you are. Like in, until you told me you're in Kosovo, I was just assuming you were over there, but like, I didn't know. Like I, I, I just assume you're everywhere all the time. So I feel like it's also like too much hassle for a person to be like, yeah, I'm going to you know run something on this guy or I'm going to pull up on like, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't think like that mindset. So I don't really know again. So I guess that's a good thing. I hope. But like, it's also good to like you, like you said, to be like precautious, pretty much, you know. Like, think. I love, I love. You're like, I never once thought. I really didn't, bro. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying. I really wasn't like, dude. Where's his? Like, what's his bank account like? I really was not like that. I was just happy that you accepted this and weren't gonna make me pay for it. Like, that's really it, dude. I was just like happy to talk to you, man. Like, that's really it, dude. And then it said you're like, oh, this could be. I thought it was funny. You're, you're like, oh, you mind if I put it like record it? Could it's overall it's for a documentary. It's like, yeah, no shit. Like what? Like he records everything. You're like why wouldn't this be recorded too? Like I found that funny, man. But dude, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I know it's late over there. I didn't even know it's freaking. Yeah, you're in Kosovo. What is it? Four a.m. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Working right now? It's ten p.m. <laughs> 10 p.m. Oh, okay. Well, it's 1 p.m. where I'm. Oh my god. Okay, my bad. Yeah, see, this is why I do comedy. My brain is not supposed to be doing math and like breaking down and stuff like that. So, I'm just. So, tell me, you do comedy. What's the comedy? Uh, I do. I so I the podcast. I'm not in my studio right now, unfortunately. But um, I do. A, I started a podcast a year ago. Just kind of. You know, maybe this is why selfishly I kind of was like wanted to talk to you because I did it in a, in a time where my life was I started and it was not too good, you know, and I was like, you know, what? let me try to do something positive. Let me try to be a good person or whatever. And I thought, you know, making people laugh, that's an easy way to be a good person or whatever. So that's why I wanted to do my I did my podcast and I just do it a few times a week. Try to like 
you know, be funny or rant or complain about st stuff in my life or in the world. And then that turned into wanting to do comedy like in li for live people, like in person. So I'd, I've been, I started doing stand up a few months ago and I've been loving that. It's super addictive. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Orange County. So like literally right outside of LA. So I go to LA to do shows and stuff, but. Me and Shroom did. So I'm going to smell a Dude, my shit is done. Stick on. Jump. Kurdush, Santa, Kurdush. On it. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, it's the home. No worries, man. You're good, dude. You, pro I, you probably got to start your night soon anyway, after working. I feel you. I feel you, dude. All right, I'll let you go, man. Yeah. Oh, but the comedy thing. Um, so do you ever do any stand-up in L.A.? Yeah, yeah. I do I do um, shows in L.A. And then the next, like my next big show is, uh, is going to be on Zoom, unfortunately, July 1st. But yeah, I go to all the comedy clubs and stuff in L.A. when I can. Which one do you perform at? Uh, fourth Wall in Hollywood. Um, the Hollywood Comedy. The Ha Ha is the one. The next what one. What sort of comedy do you do? Um, I mean, I make fun of my parents a lot. That's a good mm -hmm. one. You know, I tell a joke about. I don't want to give too much. I tell a joke about how when we first, like, when we first moved to, L we lived in LA for a little bit, and when we moved there, my dad was buying cat food, thinking it was spam. And we're eating cat food sandwiches for a while. So like, I kind of just, I, I do a lot of dark humor and I, I do make fun of them a lot. <laughs> how like, how very un, like culturally not connected they are to the world. Like how my dad like Did makes- Did actually happen that you were eating cat food? Hey man, I can't tell. I can't, hey, that's, that's, oh, that's the comedy, problem. man. Yeah, that's I the can't. problem. I no, it's all good. Yeah, no, I, I've ate some, definitely some fucked up shit. I'll say that for sure. That I definitely shouldn't have been eating, but that, I mean- <laughs> Yeah. yeah the Purina could have been one of those things. I never know. But yeah, dude. Uh, dude, it's so good talking to you. Let's do this again. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't um I didn't know I just I just somebody just tells me I have a handler. I yeah, have a handler. no worries, dude. It's all good. And they tell me that I show up at this time. Um uh but she's very beautiful. <laughs> and so whatever she tells me to do, I just do it. I feel you. Their handler kind of sounds like maybe a relation, like a relation kind of thing. Like she could grow up, something like that. Yeah, something like that. I feel you. No, dude. Yeah, if you want to talk again, dude, you just hit me up. I know everybody's trying to talk to you. So let me know, dude. I'd be glad to, more than happy, dude. I'm very happy right now, but I'd be more than happy to do another one, man. That'd be awesome. Okay. If it's up to me, we'll probably, we'll, we'll never, we'll never see each other again. So, uh, if you wouldn't mind hitting me up, I'll do it. You, Hell yeah. Yeah, please. Because if, if, if it's up to me, um, then I'll see, you know, we'll probably see each other in the afterlife. Got you. Okay. Then I'll, I'll try, I'll try to hit up your handler. Make sure they, <laughs> they get you in contact with me again, man. Yeah. All right. I appreciate it, man. Seriously. This was, this meant a lot, honestly. Uh, yeah. Same. All Take right. it easy, dude. And stay, say what up to all my Kosovar and Chiptar over there. Okay. Right. See you, dude. You.